In this video, we'll talk about ankylosing spondylitis, clinical manifestation, how do we diagnose it, and what management we can do. Now, spondyloarthropathies, they share similar characteristics. First of all, they involve the axial joints and they are rheumatoid factor negative and HLA B27 is positive in most of the cases and the last thing is that you should know this methotrexate does not go to the spine which means that since these patients most commonly they have spinal arthritis methotrexate usually is not one of the options unless they have no involvement of the spine with their arthritis now when we talk about the spindular erythropathies, we are referring to four diseases. The first one is ankylosing spondylitis. Then we have psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, and enteropathic arthritis. And we'll talk about each one separately. Now ankylosing spondylitis is the most common seen one and the most common to be asked about as well. And these patients can present with back pain and stiffness usually at the age of 20s to 40s that's pretty young age and they have these symptoms that are progressively worsening and they might mention for you that their pain is worse at night keep in your mind that not only cancer pain can present with pain at night um, if the patient is young it, cancer pain is less likely so think about ankylosing spondylitis in these patients other manifestation that can help you diagnose ankylosing spondylitis and this includes enthesitis, which is inflammation of the tendon when it is inserted in the bone, and dactylitis, which means involvement or inflammation of the whole finger. Other manifestations, if the patient comes and says that their vision has been changing, photophobia, and as well some blurriness in their vision, then you might think this patient has developed anterior uveitis. And the last manifestation I'm going to mention here is shortness of breath and that can be secondary to a couple of things. The first one is restrictive lung disease, secondary to decreased chest expansion, and that's because we have involvement of the spine and that will cause the chest to be less able to expand. And the other thing that you need to know, and a potential question, that the heart can be involved in these patients, and you have to know which valve is most commonly to be involved in patients with ankylosing spondylitis, and that's the aortic valve and to be more specific it causes aortic regurgitation so patients with aortic regurgitation the way they present is going to be shortness of breath because they have pulmonary edema secondary to back flow of the blood and there's one important exam you can perform in the clinic you ask the patient to stand against the wall and keep their feet and hip touching the wall then you can measure the distance between their occipital bone and the wall normally there will be no distance no space between the back of the head and the wall while in patients with ankylosing spondylitis since they have stiffness and restriction of the movement in their cervical and as well thoracic spine they won't be able to keep their head straight so there will be a distance between their occipital bone and the wall and you can measure this in the first visit and monitor their response as well as their progression in the next visits. So how do we say that the patient has ankylosing spondylitis? First of all, you need the typical features of the back pain, including the stiffness and the age less than 45. And these symptoms present for three months. After that, if you do an x-ray, including the sacroiliac joint, and there will be sacroiliitis or picture of ankylosing spondylitis, then the patient you can say have ankylosing spondylitis without doing MRI, without doing HLA B27. Now, if the x-ray is negative, then you need to look for other criteria. And you need to look for four things. The first one is extra axial manifestations. And we have seven features. I will just mention them in a second. As well as ESR and CRP being elevated and the patient having good response to NSAIDs for the back pain in addition to family history for ankylosing spondylitis. 
And the seven features I'm talking about here include uveitis, dactylitis, enthesitis, as well as inflammatory bowel disease. It also includes psoriasis and buttock pain. So here we are talking about seven clinical features, ESR, NSAIDs, and family history, which are 10 points. If the patient has more than four points, then this is ankylosing spondylitis without doing MRI or HLA gene or anything like that. If the patient has two points or more, then we can diagnose the patient if they have HLA B27 positive. If the patient has one point or no points of the 10 points, then we can or we need to do MRI and HLA B27, and they both have to be positive, then we can say this patient has ankylosing spondylitis. And the reason I went into details in this diagnosis is to show you that you don't need to do HLA B27 or MRI to diagnose ankylosing spondylitis. You can easily diagnose it with an X-ray and typical exam features. Now let's talk about the treatment here. So ankylosing spondylitis is more of supportive and conservative management with NSAIDs and exercising in addition to physical therapy. But if the patient fails, then you can try other treatment. Would you choose methotrexate or TNF-alpha inhibitor? Hope you guys said TNF-alpha inhibitor. Again, methotrexate does not go to the spine, so it won't help these patients. And that's it for ankylosing spondylitis. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.